there are really two they're two different aspects of the same approach so the the first thing we do here is to turn away from objective experience you understand what i mean by objective experience thoughts images feelings emotions sensations the sight of this room relationships activities we turn away from all objective experience however pleasant or unpleasant it is and we as it were turn in the other direction towards that with which objective experience is known towards that that which is aware of our experience now, the common name for that is I I am aware of my feelings now I am aware of my feelings whether I'm deeply depressed or ecstatically happy the I is the same in both case cases so the I is not limited either to the depression not limited or qualified by either the depression or the ecstasy it is independent of both that's the first step we always take here to establish what i am the presence of awareness independent of all objective experience so in our conversations and contemplations we in one way or another we go back again and again and again until we not just understand but establish in our experience until we stand as that one until we know and feel ourselves to be that one now that recognition alone that is the recognition of what we essentially are but that recognition alone is not enough to put an end to the uh, uh, years of that the layers of feelings and indeed of beliefs that have accumulated over the years so even after we have recognized or had a glimpse of our essential nature it is still necessary to go back again and again both to our beliefs and to our feelings because our beliefs and feelings we have been rehearsing them for decades we have been repeating them over and over again until they have become a very well-worn habit and that habit both the habit of thinking and the habit of feeling is not eradicated the moment we recognize our true nature so it is necessary having turned round and faced our essential self it is necessary to turn back to objective experience and face our experience from the perspective of our new understanding of ourself so we don't turn round and face our feelings as a, a separate self that likes this feeling that doesn't like this feeling that wants to change this feeling that judges that feeling we turn around and face our feeling as awareness yes so as awareness our feelings are completely welcome just as everything that appears in the space of this room is welcome the space of this room doesn't have to negotiate with each person that comes in oh i like you but i don't like you i wish you had a different color shirt on or, or i think the, the space cannot negotiate what takes place within it because it is empty it is open it, it the, the space of this room cannot resist what takes place within it even if we were to start fighting with each other now or dancing or whatever the space would remain the same it is it would it wouldn't change if we were dancing or fighting 
In that sense, it is indifferent. But it is not a cold indifference, because it is also one with everything that takes place within it. It is a, a loving indifference, a benevolent indifference. So, as this presence of awareness, or let's, let's call it the space, imagine awareness like a, like a space, like the space of this room, but it's a knowing space, an aware space. So now we in, invite our feelings to come back, having turned away from them initially, in order to establish the presence and the primacy and the nature of awareness. We now invite our feelings to come back, but we welcome them within us, us meaning the space of awareness. And we let these feelings, as it were, soak in the space of awareness in the same way that when you get into a, a bath on a cold night you just surrender your body to the warm water. So we, we and so it was from this perspective that I said we know when we are fully allowing or accepting or welcoming our feelings, when we can say to the feeling, I can live with you forever. You are welcome within me forever. That, that, that is a little test. Because what people often do when they hear this is that they welcome the feelings because they think, ah, this might finally get rid of them. All our lives we have been trying to get rid of feelings, uncomfortable feelings through substances, activities, relationships, etc. The separate self is very clever. It takes the, the non-dual teaching and it applies it as yet one more way of getting rid of uncomfortable feelings. That's not, that, that, that's, um, that's fake welcoming. It's welcoming something so that you can get rid of it. So th this question, can I live with you forever, is a very, when you, you ask, you say this to, your, to the feeling, you, you must be able to answer yes to that question. Because then you know that there's no trace in you that wants to get rid of it. And then, Look at a f what is a feeling for which you have absolutely no resistance. Next time you are suffering, put the story that accompanies the suffering on one side, because we're not dealing with ideas and beliefs, we're dealing with the, the aspect of the feelings that, that is in your body, that it's a sensation in your body. So. When you next find yourself suffering or with a sense of lack, don't let your mind go into stories. Just go to the, the feeling, the sensation of the lack. And it may take some time. You turn towards it and you invite it into yourself and you bring it closer and closer and closer until you can honestly say, I have no resistance to this feeling and see what remains of the feeling if you do that.